crazy shenanigans. I'll post his oh, boom. Looks like Shanks is back on the menu, boys. <laughs> Welcome to the map for of Brunin 2 in BFME 1 on the page 2.22 in a good versus evil matchup El Clasico between Gondor and Isengard. Beautiful. It's been a long time since the last video. I hope you guys missed me and I will try to upload more frequently. Right now, it's kind of crazy. My life is so busy. I can't even explain it. But I'm always trying to find some time to make it to my PC. And today I was finally and luckily able to. The war chant has been used on the Uruks. They will be able to catch some of the soldiers. Hobbit is passing through. And heal is going to be used. That's very interesting. I mean, even with the heal, you have no chance against war chanted Uruks. They are just built different. They are a fusion of Wildman, of Dunland, and the Orcs, okay? That's how they are so strong. And obviously, they have the industry of Isengard. And they are about to bring the Hobbits to Isengard, boys. <laughs> oh no, Pippin. You will die. In the meantime, Isengard, obviously, untouched Echo. Very good move here with the worker scouting this area, being able to see those soldiers coming. Very smart and very needed move. But I think that won't change the fact that the soldiers will make it to the Lumber Mill. However, the Uruk should answer this very quickly. And if you repair with your workers, you should be able to protect the Lumber Mill too. However, that's a very interesting spot. You can get clumped in there, which will make, which will make it kind of difficult for the Uruks to deal with you. But remember, the workers are able to repair the structure in no time. For that reason, against a good player who's playing FOD, one soldier or peasant won't be enough to destroy the Lumber Mill. In the meantime, the counter pressure is about to happen with the Uruks. The beast of Gondor is looking like this, stable coming up very soon. And here we have lots of workers working day and night. Extra shift for extra money. I mean, you can see this is the example A, where you should never split your soldiers against Isengard. And you need always the Elven Wood because, as you could see, like even if the heal in a one-on-one, -on -one, Uruks will smash you. And that's gonna be bad because, remember, each of these farms giving you the food bonus, making your horses cheaper, and now the next horse is going to cost 720, which Gondor can't afford. And that's the worst case scenario, if you can't afford your second night of Gondor immediately, and you need to wait. Now you might say, but Shanks, it's only what, 10 seconds? But especially, you know, trust me on that one, <laughs> especially at the beginning of the game, early mid game, each second matters so much. And Isengard's eco is looking phenomenal. Uruk pit level 2, the pikemen of Isengard will be recruited very, very soon. In the meantime, he was able to creep this layer at the top right. And now creeping the goblin layer with three Uruks. One of them being level 2. It would be nice if you can save them. It is a weed bomb. And, you know, no that Elven Wood. Elven Wood is a must if against Isengard because Isengard can't cover this at the beginning of the game, which means you can at least use it twice before your opponent can cover the third one, okay? So, Elvin Wood, pretty strong, one of the strongest one power points in the game. Basically giving you free armor, and it also tells your opponent, hey, whenever you want to fight on my land, you, my friend, will have no leadership. And Isengard is taking over the whole map. Creeping, literally everything has a full base, besides the last spot in the castle. Pikeman will be now enough to protect those Lumber Mills. And the second the Uruk pit is level 3, the production speed will go up to 50%, so each Uruk will come out way, way quicker and faster. Beautiful. I mean, the base of Gondor is not looking too, too hot, you know? Four empty spots, remember? Gondor, he has not the greatest eco of all time. Be careful here. Nice. He was able to pay attention. Industry has been used on the furnace. And more pikemen, more pressure. So now seeing the soldiers, Isengard's natural response should be this structure right there. Work pit. I mean, basically, rock, paper, scissor system. It's an RTS game. It's all about countering your opponent's move. And each unit have their strength and also their weaknesses. The swordmen, they, have, they are weak against archers and also against horses. But archers will need a longer time to kill them while... You know, horses can just catch up to them, trample them, and deal with them way faster. So usually you don't have only one strength and one weakness. Each unit has like multiple weakness and multiple strengths. 
but it's always about to find the optimal counter. The optimal counter is, you need to answer the question, how can I kill this unit the fastest way? For example, you can kill this pikeman the fastest way with archers, you know, you can kill them. But also swordmen can kill them. However, they can get away from the swordmen, archers will shoot them from a far distance, okay? Lourdes has been recruited. Isengard was creeping the whole top side. They've actually, beside this creep, all creep is gone. All creeps are gone from the map for Zobrunen. Power point wise, we have one power point after the industry in Warchant for Balindru, the Isengard player. And his opponent, Balin, the Gunner player, has two power points in the bank after the heal from the Spellbook. Oh, Warchant is going to be used in Palantir. Now he's going to choose the Alvin Wood, finally use it for the first time. But by the time he used the Alvin Wood for the first time, Isengard already has industry. Palantir and Warchant. It means by the time he will use it for a second time, he might even have the power points he needs to cover the land. And this is not the best spot to be used, the land. I mean, it's going to help you to secure the creep, but I think the best, you know, possible summon would be around this location or around this location. Does he have power points? I mean, upgrades. He has the shields. Yes, he does have that. And also he has forge blades and heavy armor. So now the horses will be quite tanky. Against arrows, it is. It means this few towers in the castle of Isengard won't matter that much. That's why you need to always leave some of the pikemen in your castle for the worst case scenario. Especially the Uruk pit is a very valuable structure. You need to protect no matter what. But obviously, the counter is kind of harsh. Oh, he's running it down with the horses. No, 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 no. Okay, he was, uh, was kind of forced to use the heal there. The lords can do whatever he wants if he has the backup of the pikemen and the way you can deal with this and also with the war riders is to combine your swordmen and your tower guards that's a possible combination in the patch 2.22 to kind of enable more of the infantry strats okay i mean he's gonna feed those uh, knights a bit they are level four but the uruks are actually doing a good job here because they are melee fighting and i hope he doesn't lose this beautiful trample and he will get away with level five each level will make your units way stronger. I mean, the power spike you are getting from this is very significant. Don't under underestimate that. A level 5 Knight of Gondor can actually beat two level 2 Knights of Gondor. And that's, you know, quite scary if you ask me. Uh, also, I don't like the positioning of the well behind the bees. So you want to use your structures also in an optimal way in which you place them, depending on the usage, more in the front. And when you use them less, you can place them in the back. So, for example, resource buildings, you don't need to use them. They are just there to give you resources. You can build them behind, but a well, I would always place in the front. So my units don't need to walk all the way back here. And then go again through this same location. Pikeman will be fed a bit, uh, but he's paying attention. The Uruk Pit commitment. The Uruk Pit is now exposed. He's trying to get more Pikeman on the field. Remember, there is no Ranger Summon. I like that is. And Alvin Wood is still reloading, bad trample, he lost the whole battalion of knights. The Grey Company won't be able to achieve anything here. Yes, we will be able to, to kill some of, pike, some of the pikemen, but there is no follow-up, you know. Heal was on cooldown, and also the Alvin Wood was on cooldown. Remember, imagine if the Alvin Wood would not be on cooldown, you place the Alvin Wood right in front of the Uruk pit, and your rangers will become so tanky, and it's so hard to fight against them. Oh, bad trample, <laughs> bad trample, bad trample, bad trample. Now we have the combination of Uruk, um, of tower guards and soldiers, ladies and gentlemen. He's getting more and more Knights of Gondor on the field. The Gondor resources are not looking too hot. Land was used from Gondor and instantly covered from Isengard. It's a very good land for Isen, right in front of his bees. You can see the glimmer, the shining on the land, which kind of gives you the indication of whose land this is, okay? So when you play like team games, 2v2s, 3v3s, 4v4s, that's the way you can deal or tell whose land it is. It is always the color of the player which has used it. Okay, the knights are doing actually a good job now. And remember, a level, highly leveled knight of Gondor can actually 1v1 pikemen. When they are not in formation or, you know, when they have no upgrades like forge bleeds or something. Pikemen, uh, Lourdes level almost 3. Um... Um, Isengard is playing it kind of sloppy. By the time you should, as Isengard, you need to take the outpost here. And actually also here, when you keep like one or two pikemen in the beat around the outpost, it will be so difficult for Gondor to take the outpost. Even if he takes it, he needs to invest so many resources to do that. 
He needs like whole army to destroy your outpost and in the meantime you can just keep, get the whole map control, get this outpost under your control, that's what you want to do. Isengard against good factions, you need to, especially against Gondor that is, you, you want to have the map control and outpost control as well. Now you want to siege, because if you just do this what you do and there is no follow up really, there is no threatening and, uh, against the castle of Gondor, he can do whatever he wants, you know, he can take bad trades, he can get away from the location, get back to base, heal up to full HP. Oh, the lords though, the lords though! Rampaging, full commitment against the Uruk pit. He might be able to take it down, he will be able to take it down, but to what cost? He lost one battalion of Gondonites, and Isengard won't be building the Uruk pit one more time in the front, he's gonna build it in the back, which is very smart. He has a couple of army here with crossbow men and Uruks, he will be combining them later on. Industry is available, should be using it by now. Lourdes is getting more and more levels, almost level 4. Remember level 5, a huge power spike. Now we have the counter to the soldiers tower guard combination, and the counter is the Uruk pikemen combination. Again, rock, paper, scissors. See what your opponent is doing and try to counter it. Lourdes obviously will need some time to kill this because they have heavy armor, but he will be killing them, he's outrunning them, so he's very, very close to level 5. Now, here is the deal breaker, okay? This Uruk crossbow, um, Uruk pikeman combo actually is not very strong against horses. So that means a level 5 horse like this can keep trampling them over and over again. Looks like we got some more labor scum. Looks like we got some more labor scum. Okay. Again, no outpost control for Isengard. That kind of hurts. Very soon we will have a Gandalf on the field. Uh, from the point on when Gandalf joins the battlefield, it will be quite difficult for Isengard to maintain the map control because I, uh, Gond you know, Gandalf is able to run through the map, get power points left and right. Just trample them. I think he's too scared of them, not knowing that the Knights of Condor can actually deal with this. But he doesn't want to risk the biscuit. I can respect that. Uh, the beast is looking scary though. I mean, the level 3 furnaces here are going to be super tanky. They have 5,000, 4,000 HP and each of them will be able to shoot too. It's gonna be scary. And <laughs> that's going to be scary, boys. I mean, the Grey Company not dealing too much damage against heavy armored units. And we have almost 6 power points collected. Now, as Isengard against Gondor, you don't really need the Freezing Ring. Um, and here is the reason why. Gondor, this Gondor especially, is not focusing on map on, on leaderships, okay? The only leadership he will have the entire game is going to be this dude. And maybe it's gonna be a statue, but that's all about it. The reason why Isengard should take rain over the over field of fires is if your opponent has equal or stronger leadership than you. For example, against Isen against Rohan, you need it because Rohan has two heroes that gives you leadership right off the bat. It's Aragorn and Theory. Okay? Gondor is only one. Against Mordor, you need it because Mordor is Eye of Sauron, Witch King, Drama Troll, Darkness. So you need to go for the rain. And here you don't need rain. When you go for the rain, it will take you longer time to reach the Balrog. And when you go for the Heal the Fires, you will be Bill Gates. Now it's arguable because Isengard is still rich, but you know, more money never hurts. Now we will be focusing on this Mifrandi, the White Rider. He's looking for a chance to blast this Uruks or the Vorks into the next dimension. Gondor is struggling map control wise. He has actually only two farms. I lied, it's only one farm he has on the field. He has now the Tower Guard Archer combo. Tower Guard combos are my most favorite. The Tower Guards are looking so dope in this game with their big shields and long spears. But what's better than one wizard? Exactly, boys, it's two wizards. Remember, there is a um, Lourdes you need to avoid fighting, okay? If Lourdes ever gets a chance to cripple you, Gandalf is a dead wizard. And still, no outpost control from either player. That's, you know, they, that's something they need to improve, definitely. Because especially for Gondor now, he can easily sneak in the outpost, which is far away from the, the rest of the map, and maybe Isengard will never check it. And you will get three settlements there for free, giving you the money boost you need. Because Gondor is still not very wealthy, as you can see and tell. He needs to do so much stuff. He needs to still recruit his Faramir, which is very important against Lourdes and Saruman. 
you also need to recruit his Boromir to get eventually get the chance to get him to level 4 for leadership. And he can't do all of that. And also what you need are, um, are trebuchet. Because you're not going to fight and win against these combos with your combos. It's not going to happen. Again, you have only Ganov leadership. He has Warchant and Saruman. And his Lourdes is all about to hit level 5 too. Very close actually. Then you don't win the fight. It means you need something to count your opponent in his leadership. And the best way to do that are to is to recruit the trebuchet. Okay, Gondor Workshop, 4 Trebuchet required for the level 2, hit Firestone, hit like an absolute truck. A new power is rising. Victory might be at hand. March. March to Minas Tirith. Dude, you know, Isengard was fighting only against uh, Rohan in the films. I wish we could also see a chance of seeing Isengard against some sort of Gondor army. It never happened. The only hero that actually fight from Gondor was... What? Gandalf, you know? No Boromir there, far, because Boromir died, obviously. No Faramir, no Denethor. <laughs> I mean, you're not gonna fight against these Knights of Gondor anymore. They are very strong, they are level 8. Power points are rising to the sky, 4 power points against 1. He went for the freezing green, which I don't think it's a. I, I think it's a mistake. I don't. I, I don't think you need it. I would never do it myself. I would never go here for the freezing green. It will just slow uh, slow you down a bit. And the one power point you need to invest more compared to the field of fires might actually cost you the game. You know. So now, which leadership you want to negate with this? You know what I mean? Because that only negates leadership. So it's only gonna negate the fifty percent armor from Gandalf. There comes the Reen. Beautiful trample with the Knights of Gondor. What a beautiful micro from the Gondor player Balin. The Knights will get bullied a little bit, but they can disengage. Now, you can always disengage as Gondor. There is no need to fight. There are some locations in which you are forced to fight. And the force to fight is when your gate is broken. And you need to defend your castle, obviously. But here, there is no need to fight around this location. No need at all. Like, you can beat this Warchan and his Reen, like you did. And then you can just disengage, which would be the more smart way, you know. Then you can wait for the rain's cooldown, which is going to be active for 2 minutes and 10 seconds. The war chant is going to wear off after 35 seconds. Then you can re-engage again. I mean, people, most people are making the mistake. They are like, okay, I have to fight this. They start a fight and they fight until the very end. But retreating in time is also a strategy which is very important, you know. Even in real life, you know, when you know you can't win the battle, just retreat. You might lose the battle, but you can win. You can win the war. You know what I mean. But the siege has begun. Now here you need to fight. But remember, by the time he is gonna break the wall, by the time he's gonna reach inside the castle, he might. Uh, his reign might be wearing off. Beautiful uh, protection here with the pikemen, but the knights of Condor will still make it to the ballista. It will slow down the sieging progress. Remember, the outpost has no protection. That means the ballista coming out from the siege wards will instantly get killed. It will buy Gondor additional time. And that's a strategy you can do with Gondor. I mean, if Isengard plays it sloppy, you can actually delay the game's ending very long. Which is going to make Gondor stronger and stronger and stronger. Because you will have lots of summons in the lead game. With, you know, Grey Company, Eagles, and all of that crazy shenanigans. Outpost has been destroyed. What a beautiful fireball from the young wizard Saruman. Lord is sprinting. He's speedy gonzalez -ing. He's on the hunt. He's gonna bring the wizards to Isengard. The map is looking whole red to me. There is only one purple farm on the field. Gondor is not the richest. Let's be real here. He has also three production buildings in the castle. And one well. That means he's only making money from this five blacksmiths. And all of them obviously are level 3 by now, which is the reason why he's still making some sort of money, because level 3 buildings giving you lots of resources. But remember, he still needs a lot of stuff to win the fight. This army won't do it for you. You need at least Faramir. Maybe you don't like Boromir, but Faramir is needed definitely because of his warning arrow, which is going to chunk the wizard Saruman. Outpost control reclaimed by, Mo by Isengard. Now going for the battering rams. Rams are weaker siege weapons because they are melee siege weapons which is good early mid game but it's kind of weak in the late game because in the late game i mean gondor can just make trebuchet and one shot this ram on the land 
it will be covered but he needed so much time to cover and it's a big mistake from isengard you want to cover both of them they are so close to each other you can just cover both of them land will be now recovered from Gond uh, from gondor player the combos are exposed pikemen are not in formation in time beautiful fireball beautiful trample Gandalf is keeping the distance and he's trying to get the power points he needs for the for the for the eagle special summon okay that's the goal of gondor his main goal is to get the power points you need it's a quarter he needs to unlock his eagles the second he unlocks the eagles he can summon them and then he can kill lurz once lurz is gone gandalf activates you know gandalf is enabled he can go in and do whatever he pleases to do there's a farm from gondor um and there is a farm from gondor outpost control finally both of them under isengard here's a tower in the back which is kind of not the best location to have it's better in the front obviously you can put also units inside the tower now in the patch 2.2 that means you can put an archer inside this and inside this one too for double protection and if you want to go crazy you can even place a pikeman there you know so it's gonna take again gondor lots of resources to destroy it now he's going for the bees um oh oh boom chakalaka gandalf the white now here's the power points he needs for the eagle special summon and he has also rain ranger special summon in addition to that it means he has lots of firepower and the chance to actually do something but he has to do something too because rams are about to break in boys okay the bees is about to go open all you can eat gondor buffet one more hit to break this part two more hits to break this part now the question is can gondor somehow find a way to defend himself that's a that's the golden question rain is available warchan is available lords level five saruman has leadership there comes the eagle special summon but way too early i don't know why he's trying to focus down the the, 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 the saruman he's gonna die but i think the real here the target should have been lords because lords is what keeps Gandalf away now you need to go for a blast but there is a lords who will stun you he's getting chunked a little bit what Gandalf can do is go around this location he's going to summon the great company 10 power points against two power points bad trample into the pikeman but luckily they have an information now these combos are exposed but there are still two pikemen around in the porcupine formation waiting for the engagement of the knights of gondor there comes the eastery he will be able to kill the lords but it's not a warp trade if you lose your Gandalf in exchange now the heal is available he gotta use it he will be using it oh actually he will slaughter this army Gandalf can always you activate the bubble he shouldn't be using it but he didn't the pikemen will deal the bonus damage to a mounted hero and Gandalf will be dead but I think it's totally fine the only problem here is again map control fixes every problem in the late game now Gondor is broke really broke he has only four resource buildings in the base he lost also his Gandalf and Gandalf cost you 2400 and he is less he has less than 500 let's take a look into the resources from the Isengard player shall we <laughs> 24,000 <laughs> level 10 Knights of Gondor 14 and a half power points against eight power points so almost Badrock almost AOD both the heroes got killed in exchange for Gandalf Gandalf's level is level 7 he still needs three whole levels to get to level 10 which will uh, we, uh, in, uh, enable the war of power and I miss this game dude it's been a long time I hope you guys miss me too you know <laughs> bad trample so two power points for AOD and five power points for Valrock because he went for this too he doesn't need to go for this remember Gondor went only for this additionally but you need this to get this you can't get to eagles from this you know so you could the fastest way would be heal gain to white cloud break and then EOD. but great company and also eagles are just too good however Isengard went for the for the Palantir which you know it's arguable if you need it or not because of the cheese potential he went for this and this and then this so they are actually pretty even in the power points department in the late game um when it comes to the ultimate summons like balrog or eod map control is more important than ever okay because you don't you want to when you play gondor or rohan against isengard you want to force the isengard player to use the uh, to use the balrog defensively to kill your army because if you use it here your base is open 
he will destroy 80% of the bees and then he can just go in and finish you. And you have no outpost, it means if your castle falls, you will fall too. Army of Isengard approaches. But we have the white wizard. This has to be good for something. Two wizards in the giant battle of the best. Battle of the worst. Gondor taking some of the map control, finally realizing, okay, I can't win like this. There comes the war chant on the three crossbowmen Uruk combos. They are level 2 and level 3. The speechcraft has leveled them up a little bit. The rangers are committing. Rangers are horrible fighters. They are only damage dealers. So they have no tankiness whatsoever. They will die in a second if they get shot in the face by the Uruk crossbowman combo. But the trebuchet might stop them from doing what they are doing. Lourdes' only goal here is to cripple this Ganov. Rain is not available. There's a statue behind. So here they have like more leadership. It gives you 75% damage and 50% armor from Gandalf. But it's still weaker than the damage and armor leadership you have from Isengard. Now he's way too scared to fight. I would have just committed to this, which you can definitely win. All you need to do is have a priority list. What you want to what you want to focus down first. Which structure you want to destroy first. In this case, it's about the well and the statue. The well even more important than the statue. Because it's far away, here you can easily easier reach the well, which can uh, cut the regeneration of the enemy units, and then go for the for the statue later. Oh my god, my phone is talking. What the heck? <laughs> All right, he's just waiting for the rain to go. F oh, but there comes the AOD. Oh, Palantir is gonna be used. Lourdes is going to zoom now. Speedy Gonzalez in. He's running into two different directions, which is very smart, by the way. Lourdes there. And a Saruman there, but it also means that one of them is exposed to, to Gandalf. Maybe you can try to outrun the EOD, but you can't outrun Mifrandia, the White Rider. He will be using the Eastery and kill him. Level 8. I believe also Saruman died. Yeah, Saruman died too. But remember, losing units will give Isengard power points, okay? So especially heroes like Lourdes and Saruman, if you lose them, you will get power points. And for that reason, now the Balrog has been unlocked too. The Siege Forest is going to be destroyed. Mifrandia, level 8. And his Eastery and also his Lightning Sword are on cooldown. But, ladies and gentlemen, for the next fight, Gondor has no EOD. And Isengard has both AOD and Freezing Rain. Now it's about time. And during this time, we don't want to lose the entire map though. But there comes the Balrog of Morgoth. The base is still destroyed heavily. And he's going now for the outpost with the one pikeman. Remember, the outpost has zero protection on it. Can Balrog... He should be able to destroy the base. But you want to breath fire like this, okay? Mm, maybe? If you destroy this... Mm, okay, if you could destroy this one, it would be nice. But I think you can still maybe do it, because you kind of catch this one, that's pretty good. Now you need two auto, two auto attacks to destroy this one, with your ignite. And your ignite is on. If you don't ignite, you need more, because you see the damage cut, his ignite wear off. Uh, it's gonna be close, can he do it? Mm, I don't know, nah, he's not paying attention to this. This one has been protected by the way. Yeah, he's not gonna be able to do that. I mean, this is not about the Balrog, it's about the player. He had the chance to finish off the castle, but he didn't. Because he was paying attention to something else, which obviously I can't really criticize, because in the late game, we just like have to focus on so many things at once. There comes the Easter Light on the army, uh, but Gandalf is getting chunked from the pikemen a lot, and he has to deal, he has to disengage. Now, Gondor has gotten two outposts under his control, okay? Two outposts and around about 50% of, of the map. Um, Isengard has lots of eco advantage, and here is one of the mistakes people tend to make with Isengard in the late game. Isengard is a powerhouse in terms of economical advantages over the opponent factions, okay? And this, this is like proven here. He went also now for the field of fires. Now, sitting only on one Uruk pit is just waste of potential. You can destroy these two structures and go for the warp pit in another secondary Uruk pit there. It's all about spamming units in the late game. There is no such thing like feeding anymore because your opponent has already unlocked every single power point from the spellbook menu. So it's all about dominating the map, pressuring your opponent and out-spamming him. There comes the Eagle Summon. Lourdes is exposed. No backup. Eagles hitting so hard. Eagles are hard, uh, hero counters, by the way. There is no chance you can get away from the Eagles if you have no 
crazy damage leadership, but Saruman is able to answer one of them with the Fireball. But Lourdes is dead, means again, Ganoff can do whatever he wants. He's also level 9. Now, Isengard is sitting only on two settlements. Remember the Isengard who had, like, full map? And th that's, like, a perfect proof. But when, when there is going to be a question, what was the mistake? I can tell you significantly the obvious mistake you might just miss in this game, okay? Isengard playing way too passive. Way too passive. He's dominating the entire map and then he's sitting in the base, making combos, waiting for Saruman. And just giving Gondor the chance to get awesome money, to get also going. Isengard never went for outpost control, never went for the siege before Gondor hit like everything he wanted. That's something you want to do way before. You know, get outpost, siege him a little bit, put pikemen. You don't even need fire arrows in this matchup. You don't need that. All you need is Blades, Armor, and Banner, didn't you go? You make just Pikeman, 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 Pikeman. If he's going for the soldiers, you make War Criders, you go for the Siege, you go with the Rams, in, go out. That's how you want to put pressure. Because that's the only way you can actually threaten your opponent, by threatening his castle. If you never do this, well, Gondor won't be that much behind because he's the one faction with nine spots in the castle. So you give him lots of time, he will get money anyway, right? In power points too, especially after Gandalf, it's going to be way easier for Isen for Gondor to play the matchup. Because Gandalf is way too mobile, your loot can never catch up to him, you know? 30,000, but what's the matter, baby? <laughs> now, it's super late game, now you have to deal with level 10 Knights of Gondor, that's gonna be quite scary. Boom! You have to de deal very soon with a Gandalf level 10, that's going to be even scarier. And now the summons in coming too with the cloud break that's going to be even more disastrous now he's just camping in the base gondor is not rich by the way but he's gonna get rich now he's gonna get super rich now he has like what one two three four five um four five farms and two outposts you know lords and saruman but you see, by the time he's going to be there, Come, EOD will be available again. Come Rangers. Oh, here's Faramir, uh, Boromir. But he never recruit Faramir, just like Denethor. You know, he doesn't like the boy, Faramir. Lourdes, level 5. And he's just chilling. Maybe he's too scared of a potential EOD. That's why he's moving the army first. The thing is, a good player will never use AOD to kill this, you know? When he, when he doesn't see your heroes, he will never use AOD and he doesn't need AOD. Without your leadership, without the leadership of your heroes, these combos are not threatening at all. They have like low levels on them, they are not dealing too much damage, there is a Ganoth that can blast them into the next dimension too. Like, there is zero reason for Gondor to deal with this with AOD. When he has Gandalf and power points, you know? And Rangers and level 10 Knights of Gondor too. He has many, many walk riders. I think he's preparing a potentially sneaky base rush that's slightly out of vision of the Gondor player. He's barely able to see one of the walk riders, I believe. Um, maybe he wanna go inside the base. But again, there is a huge army awaiting you. Now the arm. Oh my god, you missed the war of power. My bad. My bad. Oh my bad. I mean, like, we, we know what happened. We know what happened. Let's not embarrass this Uruks. <laughs> I mean, I like the attempt at what he's doing. You see what he can do. The amount of damage the Vorks are dealing to this combos is kind of crazy. You know, it's kind of crazy damage. He killed all the combos, by the way. All of them. As easy as that. I mean, most of them, at least. But now AOD is available, and also Badrock is going to be available. It means it's going to be a round 2. Now, before the round 2 happens, some players have to take the map control. The outpost control, again, is essential. Now, the base is quite vulnerable against a Badrock, because this production building is all about to be destroyed. It's almost level 3, and there is only a level 2 production building. It means the breath fire with the Ignite of Badrock is going to be able to one-shot these two production buildings too. So the way you want to do this is go here, breath fire like this. In a dream world, you want to aim to destroy all of these five structures. If your breath fire can do this, 
you will easily be able to destroy this waves from Gondor, which is kind of weak compared to level 3 production buildings, you know? Then you destroy this, this with the sword. Then your second breath fire is going to be placed from here to destroy these two structures and the citadel, you know? And if you need help, it's an open base. You can always send some units inside there and finish the last remaining one or two structures in the worst case scenario. But if you play it correctly, you don't really need that. Or you want to force your opponent to use AOD defensively, you know? Here you want to be the one who's going to summon the AOD uh, Balrog first. I think that's going to be the must, much, much more um, right choice. It's going to... Uh, I don't think you need it, to be honest with you. I, I don't think you needed that. But the Vorks are coming now. Okay, now this is going to be interesting. Because with the Vorks, he can actually finish off the castle. But there are still some traps on top of the wall. He's going to use the Ignite and destroy this one without the Breath Fire. That's very important. Beautiful. Now go. He's going to summon the AOD defensively. That's a winning fight for Isengard. That's a winning fight for Isengard, okay? Even if he summons the AOD here defensively, that's a win in my book for Isengard. Because the Balrog was just much, much better compared to the to the AOD. AOD is going to be able to kill the Balrog, yes. But he lost the entire army before this. And in addition to that, he also <laughs> lost his AOD summon. So now, the walk riders can just go in. There is a pikeman here, which you can just avoid. It's like one pikeman. You just don't trample it. And just go for a structural damage. Just go for a structural damage. That is pretty good in though. You need to be careful about the full of a took. The traps are annoying. They don't dealing too much damage to the cavalry units, but they are able to knock you down on the ground all the time. Going for the structural damage exclusively. There comes the... Uh, he wanted to dodge it, but I think you just commit at this point. Um, Gondor is... Still having the map control around around the outpost, it's pretty good. The <laughs> barracks is gonna be destroyed. Uh, the traps are annoying, but there is only one structure remaining. There comes the lords and eagles, and now the combos are coming. Warchant is on cooldown, keep that in mind. And fireball, 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 fireball. He's gonna fireball one of them, get killing him. And now also this guy can heal in the worst case scenario. Remember, there is no more Eagle Summon, there is no more Ranger Summon. He summoned literally everything right off the bat from his spellbook by panicking. He summoned Eagles, the Rohirrim, and the Grey Company at the same time. Now, the base is still very open. Yes, he has outpost control, but he's still starving. You know, he needs some cash. He has no cash. That's the main problem right there, boys. He's going to kill the Lords, but Lords get a beautiful trample off. However, now you won't be missing this one. Cloud Prick. You need to use Cloud Prick before the, for the, before the War of Power. If this would be a professional move, which would be to place Faramir and Boromir next to Gandalf. When you do this with the Blast, with the War of Power. If you do this, they share experience with Gandalf and they both get high levels. Level 5 or something. Beautiful. He has still army there, by the way. Crazy game. Crazy game. Not bad. Isengard is still rich. He has 28,000. There comes the... Oh, oh, oh. There is one part he forgot to repair. And he has no money to repair. He's going to cancel the structures because he knows. Okay. There comes the lightning sword. Fully committing. Walk riders are doing actually work in this game. Dealing so much... Tons of economical damage. Now full commitment around the base. There is nothing that is left anymore besides level 1 blacksmith and few in the construction blacksmiths, which are very squishy. Um, there is outpost here from Gondor, but he has a couple of un upgraded units. He never went for the marketplace. That's why he's not able to keep with the money and he will just leave the game. That's it. Isengard is victorious, ladies and gentlemen. Jijua plates. You know, it was not bad for the first game since I'm back. But I will see you with more games in the following days. If you don't want to miss those new videos coming at you, make sure to subscribe to the channel and also leave a like to this video. I will see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself. Keep hitting like a truck. And as always, stay beyond standards. Peace out, boys.